I had so much fun this morning on the Hockey Canada Instagram site, um, reading Puckster's new hockey teammate that I thought I would do a video and I will post this on my YouTube channel and I'll read it again. Um, okay, so here we have Puckster's hockey, new hockey teammate. And uh, I'm so excited to read it to you. I love these Puckster books. Okay, here we go. Puckster stared at the Jumbotron. His team was down two to one to the backyard bunnies and there was only a minute left to play. Hockey Canada was on a time out. Puckster glanced at his pals. Oh, look, Charlie slurped water. Rolly, he was sitting on the ice. Sarah's shoulders sagged, and Manny was dozing in his sled. Francois coughed and sniffled. But look how Francois is coughing and sniffling into his arm, and that's very important that we do that. Puckster knew he should tell Francois to go home, but Team Canada only had enough players for one line. Still, Puckster didn't like seeing his pals so tired. When the referee dropped the puck, a bunny picked it up and zoomed toward the Team Canada net. Puckster gave chase, but his legs felt heavy and he had trouble keeping up. I'll help Puckster, Sarah yelled. Using her long stride, she skated after the bunny. Manny slid in front of the net to help Roly. Charlie just whirled around and Francois slowly skated back. Uh-oh. Sarah caught up to the bunny and created a turnover. Puckster quickly stopped and changed directions. Pass to Francois, he yelled. He'll have a breakaway. Sarah fired off a perfect pass to Francois. Just as Francois was about to receive the puck, he coughed and he tripped and he fell. The buzzer sounded to end the game. Team Canada had lost. Well, Puckster skated over to his fallen friend and Francois looked terrible. His nose was running and his eyes were watery. You need to go to bed, Puckster said as he helped his pal to his feet. Puckster le Francois leaned on Puckster and they skated towards the bench. That's when Puckster noticed a panda bear off to the side at the stands playing with a rubber ball and a hockey stick the panda bear shot the ball against the wall over and over and over again team canada filed to the to, off the ice and into the dressing room i'm so tired i won't be able to climb my tree said charlie my arms are sore from skating, said Manny. Why do you think Manny's arms would be sore from skating? His arms, not his legs. Yes, that's right. Because Manny has hurt legs and Manny is in a wheelchair. And when he plays hockey, he goes on a sled. Puckster looked at his teammates inside. I think we need another player and we need one soon. Puckster's pals nodded their heads in agreement. Suddenly, Puckster had an idea. I've got to go, he exclaimed. I know where we can find another player. Well, Puckster whipped off his hockey equipment and rushed out of the dressing room. He looked by the arena stands. He looked in the lobby. Finally, he left the building and he looked outside. Puckster heard the panda bear before he saw him. The panda was shooting the ball against the arena wall over and over and over again. Hi, my name is Puckster, he said, walking up to the panda. We need another player in Team Canada. Would you like to be on our team? The panda bear kept shooting the ball. My parents, they don't know about hockey and I don't have any equipment. I have equipment I've grown out of, said Puckster. You can have mine. Well, the panda bear stopped playing and he looked at Puckster. I've never skated before. Well, come to our practice tomorrow and I'll teach you, said Puckster. What's your name? Juan, the panda replied. Look what happens the next day at practice. The next day, Puckster and his pals met at the outdoor rink. Francois was still sick. Puckster gathered his friends around. We have a new teammate coming today, he said. Where? said Charlie. Who? squeaked Charlie. 
His name is Juan, said Puckster. It's kind of late, said Rolly. Manny pointed to a branch. He's here, but he's up in the tree. Why do you think that Juan is up in the tree? Puckster laughed. You can come down now, Juan, he said. We're ready to start. I can't, Juan said. I'm too scared. You know, all know how to skate and I don't. I didn't know how to skate either, squeaked Charlie. He spun around and around, but look at me now. It just takes practice, said Sarah. You can do it, Juan, added Puckster. Slowly, Juan climbed down the tree. Puckster and his pals helped Juan suit up in Puckster's old hockey equipment. Finally, Juan was ready. He took a deep breath. He stepped on the ice and he toppled over. I can't do this, he said with a frown. Yes, you can, said Puckster, pulling him to his feet. Every day for a whole week, Puckster worked with Juan. He taught him to glide and stride and how to get up when he fell. He even tried to teach him a one-timer. Puckster would pass the puck to Juan and he would try to shoot it without stick handling first. Juan always missed. Why is it so hard with skates on? He, Juan asked, flopping to the ice. Keep trying, said Puckster. You'll get the hang of it. Team Canada's next game was against the crazy coyotes. Puckster was nervous. He knew the coyotes were faster than the bunnies and Francois was still sick. On the day of the game, Juan put on his equipment. But when he got to the team bench, he sat down instead of heading out for the warm-up. This is scary, Juan said. Don't worry, said Sarah. Once the game starts, it's not scary. It's fun. I'm not sure, said Juan. Maybe, maybe I'll just play next game. Just try, said Puckster. If you don't like it, you don't have to play again. Juan nodded his head and stepped on the ice. The instant the puck dropped, a coyote picked it up and took off like a race car down the ice. Charlie chased after the coyote player and stole the puck back. The players from both teams skated up and down furiously. Juan sat still at center ice. Next period, said Puckster to Juan, try to move your feet. Okay, said Juan, I'll try. By the end of the first period, the score was one to nothing for the Coyotes. And Juan did. As the clock ticked down in the second period, Juan skated up and down the ice and tried to keep up with the play. Puckster and Charlie scored for Team Canada, while the Coyotes sunk one past Roley. When the buzzer sounded, the score was two to two. And Puckster skated off with Juan. He patted his new teammate on the back. That was better, he said. Now try and touch the puck. Okay, I'll try, said Juan. The third period started and Juan skated up and down and up and down. Suddenly, the puck came screeching his way. He froze. One time it, Puckster yelled. Juan thought about everything Puckster had taught him. He watched the puck. He pulled his stick back and he smacked the black rubber disc with all his might. The puck flew in the air like a rocket. Juan was so surprised, he fell backwards. The puck blasted to the back of the coyote's net. Puck's and his pals threw their gloves in the air and raced over to Juan. See what happens when you try, said Puckster. Juan's grin stretched from ear to ear. I'm so glad you asked me to be on Team Canada. Hockey is fun. Now, boys and girls, there's Puckster's tips in the back of the books. And my favorite tip in the back of this book is always try hard. It will help you be successful. And we have to try hard right now to be, to stay at home, right? Like it's hard sometimes. You have to do what one did. He had to try new things. First, he just stood there and then he moved his feet and then he touched the puck. But each time he tried something new and that's what we have to do right now. We have to try hard to stay home. And I wanna thank you for listening. It was Puckster's new hockey teammate written by Lorna Schultz Nicholson and illustrated by Kelly Finley. Bye-bye.